What if you had been coping about Bitcoin since 2013? How bitter would you be essentially spending your time yelling and screaming about Bitcoin to the point where you're just sharing the same FUD charts over and over again, hoping that anyone will listen to you? How down bad do you think you'd be? And how upset would you be today, 11 years later? We found such an account that has been coping for a very long time about Bitcoin. Since they've been dead wrong about Bitcoin this entire time, we'd at least give them this one day in the sun. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, last week, fellow Bitcoiner and pleb and friend to the show, Honk Hogan, shared a tweet with me uh, about this account called SRS Rocco Report. Now, I've seen this account here and there. I, I don't really pay uh, much attention to it. But the thing is this, the the tweet that Honk shared with me was pretty funny. <laughs> so I figured, you know what, we should do a clip about this. The world's biggest joke is being perpetrated on Bitcoin investors into believing it's an asset. The irony about the supposed decentralized BTC market is that it's being propped up by U.S. Treasury debt funneled into Tether. Debt propping up Bitcoin. Now, I find this very interesting because essentially what's happening here is that this person um, is essentially choosing to ignore the truth about all markets, including their fabled and untouchable gold and silver markets. So the reality is, is that these hard assets, right? It's not necessarily that they quote unquote retain their purchasing power. The reality is, is that the money that we use is constantly losing its purchasing power. So Rocco Reports is sitting here claiming that Bitcoin is a Ponzi scheme being held together by Tether. My friend, what do you think the US dollar is? Who do you think is holding up that Ponzi scheme, right? So, and I've also heard Bitcoin uh, lovingly referred to as a Ponzi for the people. Now, whether or not you put a lot of importance into that, I mean, that that's up to you. Um, but the point being is this, Bitcoin is a finite asset, right? It's as, you know, for people who have watched this channel and who know about Bitcoin, digital scarcity can only be created once. Bitcoin is censorship resistant. Bitcoin is not issued by the government. There is a hard cap of 21 million. And all the transactions can be verified by anybody in the world. So the, the point being is that Bitcoin is this meter stick that does not move. You can always mine more gold can always mine more silver. We actually have no idea how much gold or silver or any of these minerals truly exists, not just on our planet, but in the entire universe. We have no idea how much of this stuff exists, okay? But you see, we're fully aware of how much Bitcoin exists. It doesn't matter how big the universe is. It doesn't matter how old it is. Bitcoin is always 21 million, okay? This meter stick, this meter stick that is never changing. But you see, the meter stick we use right now is fiat, and fiat constantly changes. And by its virtue of constantly changing, right, because what's happening is, is that more and more of it is being printed, and as a result, its purchasing power is dwindling because there's more and more of it to go around. Now, what ends up happening is, is that that meter stick is constantly moving. So, any asset that is harder than that, right? Any asset that has better qualities than that will appreciate in purchasing power. So this isn't some giant FUD story where this guy thinks he's just debunked Bitcoin. This is a person who essentially is being a complete hypocrite about Bitcoin and also being a hypocrite about the assets he loves, like gold and silver. Now, the best part about this whole thing 
is how long this account has been coping about Bitcoin and how they've been using the same FUD points over and over again. You'll see right here, November 8th, 2022. Guess what? The same exact chart was posted September 6th, 2022. So two months before, same chart, same chart, same message, right? Crying about Bitcoin. And now you may ask yourself, how long has this person been crying about Bitcoin? Well, November 20th, 2013, okay? There was a, uh, an article that was released and essentially, okay, it was again, the first thing it did was, the first thing they did was FUD Bitcoin and explain, and this is back in 2013, how we are actually gonna be going back to a trade and barter system. So here we are, it's 2024, that didn't happen. So 11 years, 11 years of being dead wrong about Bitcoin, 11 years of not doing enough research about Bitcoin, 11 years of simply posting the same FUD over and over again about Bitcoin. And they're dead wrong. And anybody who's paying these people for their research reports, just flushing money down the toilet, uh, because essentially th these people are just incentivized to tell you about their own investments, which are gold and silver, and completely ignore any of the qualities of Bitcoin. Now, the um, the last piece of this right now, this account has latched on to the Tether FUD. Now, I have talked about the Tether FUD in the past. I have a, I think I have an, a playlist about debunking Tether FUD, which I will link in this video if you so choose that you want to go back and look at this. But look, the reality is this, okay? Um, this account and, and many other Tether FUDsters like to claim that somehow Tether props up Bitcoin. And they completely ignore that Tether only came into existence in 2014, long after Bitcoin already had a nominal value in the market. So this whole idea that Tether props up Bitcoin is complete effing nonsense. So traders use Tether to make trades, right? They trade in and out of Tether to other cryptocurrencies. Tether makes money, makes commission off of this, okay? That's one of the ways in which they make money. Now, as I said before, Tether plays this game the best. What do I mean by that? As of October 31st, 2024, Tether has about $105 billion of reserve assets of which 84.5 billion are treasury bills, okay? Now, you could sit there and say, oh, well, you know, it's all just a giant Ponzi that's all being held together. Well, guess what? So is the entire economy. So th th your, your point is completely moot. But while you're crying about Bitcoin, the whole entire economy is, is probably of a lower quality because so much money can be printed and so many shenanigans can be played. And there are central authorities making all the rules and issuing all of this debt and all of these currencies. So this whole idea that this is a Bitcoin problem is complete and utter nonsense. But my point is this, Tether is playing this game correctly. Why? Because they're buying these treasury bonds. They are playing nicely with the US government. Now, let's address the idea that Bitcoin is somehow going to implode if Tether doesn't exist. Well, like any market that has some type of a major event that occurs, right? Like a business going under or something like that. Well, guess what? Market participants, human beings are emotional and irrational. And oftentimes we will sell something to avoid the pain. So yeah, there's probably going to be some market fluctuation if Tether were to disappear from one day to the next. But make no mistake, another Tether will simply just appear. That's all there is to it. It's simply just a stable coin. It's a peg. Anybody can make them. If Tether were to disappear, all of a sudden, all the action's going to move over to, uh, to, to Circle's uh, stable coin. And if it doesn't move there, it'll go to PayPal's stable coin. The idea that these stable coins are somehow an anchor for Bitcoin's value, this is cope, okay? This is seethe and cope. And essentially, you're just trying to find a reason why you should stay away from Bitcoin. Anyways, I really appreciate Honk Hogan uh, bringing this 
bringing this uh, this tweet to my attention. Uh, accounts like this, I, I find, are always amusing because anytime I go back and look at their history, they've usually been coping about Bitcoin for years, and they can't seem to figure out why it doesn't fail. So what they do is, at some point, they just get so frustrated. They just keep repeating the same thing over and over again. It's it's actually pretty interesting. It's the um, it's a theory called the illusory truth effect, where essentially you are exposed to false information so many times that you believe it's true. And that is exactly what the tether FUD is. Anyways, guys, that's all I wanted to talk about today. Catch you tomorrow.